What's the fuck up, it's your boy Lee Squad. Welcome back to my video. Welcome back to my channel. Hello, it's Alik. How are you? I missed you. So, welcome back to my turn my returning subscribers. And if you are new, hi, how are you? I'm Leek, and you are. Put your name in the comments below. If you're gonna subscribe, please do actually. Just don't like, don't not subscribe. I'm gonna be talking about today my year of 2019 Whew, jesus this was a year but i can say that this year was better than last year was and as you probably can see my makeup is a lot better than last year was probably entered like a clip or a photo or something from last year's makeup my camera was blurry my makeup was it was okay but it was a lot so so I want to film some other videos for you guys. But yeah, this video is basically going to be my review of 2019. Um, similar to last year's review. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Let's now that I have your attention. Let, let, let's, let's, now that I have your attention. attention. Let's, now that I have your attention. Let's begin. So, 2019. Started off rough, not gonna lie. I had gotten a new job. We can say that much. I had gotten a new job and I absolutely loved it when I first got it. And then I hated it. But then I loved it again and then I hated it and then I loved it and then I hated it. So this whole year has been me loving and hating my job and just trying to like remember that throughout all of this, there's a master plan and a lot of this video, I'm going to be dropping kind of like some gems of advice that I've given myself over the past year that people have given me. Um, but one thing I can say that has come true is just like stay true to yourself and who you want to be and who you are and the world will open up for you. I know that I'm still in school and I'm still doing certain things, but the world has opened itself up to me a lot more than what it was before. You know, I didn't fully accept myself last year and who I was. I've struggled with identity this year heavily, more than most will know. Um, but I think every year is about like finding yourself. And I know that I said last year, like, you know, this year was gonna be the rebrand and the rebuild. And I did, I had a rebrand this year and it was amazing. It was, it was great, it was better than anything I actually ever imagined. And I was so happy that it happened. Um, it's one of the best things I ever did because it pushed me to be more, more motivated this year. And I went to BeautyCon and I met so many amazing people. I've made so many amazing friends. I got added to PR list that I never thought I'd be on. I've truly had the best year ever. I've built some of the best relationships I'll ever have in my life. Um, sadly, my roommates and I are parting ways um, by, the end, by the end of our leasing term, which is in July. Um, but we're parting ways by then and... We're still going to, of course, talk and love each other and be there for each other. But, like, not living with them anymore is going to be an adjustment. Just because I'm used to texting them and was just sitting out in the living room or them being in my room or me being in their room or whatever, whatever. And just hanging out and having fun. But we, I do know that, like, things change and you, people grow and we have to grow and keep moving, but I know that the relationship will never end. It'll always be the same, it'll always be there, and it's just gonna grow from here. And sometimes you have to learn that nurturing the relationships that you already have, instead of trying to salvage the ones that have already gone, is probably the best thing you can ever do. In the end, when it all comes down, you have to have people that are going to be there for you, not people that have flaked on you before, not people that are, it's going to be like a, oh, I might be there, I might be around, I might come around, I might be able to help you. You need somebody that's going to be firm and set on picking you up because if you're on the side of the road, then what are you going to do? If you are having a breakdown in the middle hospital, what are you going to do? If you are just struggling with school, and you don't have those people around you, then what are you going to do? I had to learn that the hard way because I focused on so many relationships that I didn't have and it just made me sadder and it made me more depressed and it made me more, and it made me angrier. And it made me just an overall not good person at the time. If you are in school, God bless you. 
because school is stressful, okay? I hate school with a passion. And I think I really came to truly understand that and believe that this year. Um, because I've always, like, had a disdain for school, a distaste for it. But this year showed me, like, a different side of, like, how I felt about it. And school just... It was not it for me this year. I did my best, and I failed. I mean, I not failed. Oh, excuse me, Jesus. I'm mm -mm, doing that. I passed, and I'm hoping and praying that I passed this semester. It's almost over with. There's like one week left. I have finals this week and next week. I'm gonna have a final tomorrow, um, and then some next week. But in all that, I really realized that I really didn't want to be in school. I really wanted to focus on my makeup. I really wanted to focus on my career in the beauty industry or just in the social media world because I don't necessarily want to be known as a beauty influencer. I don't want to be known as a beauty boy. I don't want to be known as a black boy in beauty. I mean, I do want to be known as those things because I, I can be an advocate for it and I can be somebody that makes change, but I also want to be known for more than just my makeup or more than just my skin color or more than just my gender. I want to be a platform for everything that I have to offer as a social worker because that is my major in college and I think the only reason why I'm still here is because number one I am actually scared of if I quit school what's going to happen to my life but also number two that I've come so far why just give up now when there's only two and a half three semesters left you know everything does happen for a reason and everything, every, the timing is, you know, happens for a reason. So I'm just praying that God has a plan for me. Like I said, this is just a review of my life for the past year because this year has been kind of crazy. <laughs> I've just been pushing myself and pushing myself and pushing myself. And that was the point where I was putting out look after look after look after look after look after look. And it got so to the point where like, I felt like my pictures were colliding together. Like everything was just... Colorful, yeah, but it was mostly greens or mostly purples or pinks or blues or something like that. And it just wasn't what I was really looking for. So I decided to shut everything down, shut down production to give myself a chance to breathe and give myself a chance to break. Because I think that we all need a break. And I know that it's probably not the best thing I should do as an influencer as or as a want to be influencer. But I know that I don't want to put out content that I'm not proud of. I don't want to put out something that you all are not going to like or are going to fake like or that you're going to like, but I'm not going to like. I don't feel comfortable with putting that stuff like that out. There have been so many looks that I've done over the past week and a half that I haven't been active on social media that I have just scrapped because I've hated the way they look in the lighting or I've hated the way that my face was set or my skin. And I don't know what happened today, but I, I guess the skincare routine just finally came back through for me. Creatives even need breaks sometimes. Everybody needs a break. Everybody needs an outlet, whether that is doing makeup or watching your favorite movies in your pastime or, heck, if working is your thing, then you go to work. That is not my thing. That is ghetto. It's tired. It's old. It's oversleeping and sleeping too much and just being anxious about things all the time or being worried or just not having the energy or not having the emotion behind doing things. It's not okay. And... You know, it's hard to notice it yourself or see it yourself or actually acknowledge it yourself. But once you do, you start the process of trying to fix that and tell yourself how to make it work or um, just get a plan going. And I think that going to counseling for me has helped a lot because I've been going to counseling for about three years now. Um, wow, just crazy. I'm telling my whole life story on here. But I've been going to counsel for about three years now at the school. And honestly, it was the best decision I ever made because I never really believed in counseling as a kid because of what my parents told me, because of how I was raised. And then once I got here, I was going through so much that nobody really understood back home because none of my folks went to college. So I'm the first generation in college. And I'm, I'm a college student, excuse me. And I'm probably going to be the first generation college student and graduate, which is which makes me extremely proud of myself. And I know that my family's going to be proud of me too. But it's still hard because going to school here, two hours away from my family, 
um, and having to make an entire, entirely new family here. Lucky enough that I have, you know, my roommates who are like, who are my best friends. And then I have other friends who I consider my best friends. And, you know, I don't know what I'd do without them, without any of them, because I honestly feel like I have a friend for any occasion. I have a friend for any situation or a friend for any type of just whatever I have going on, somebody's there for me. And I think that's what a lot of people lack in life as well. It's like not having friends or not having family, not having someone to be there for them, to show them that they're not alone or they're not going through it alone or just that everything's going to be okay and that they can get through whatever the hell they're going through. And stability and friends and family is something that I have always had a tremendous respect for and a tremendous love for but this year it showed me a completely different side because i've made bonds out of almost unsalvageable things and that is why you know going back to the topic of of salvaging things and nurturing things you know my relationships that i've had that i had last year i thought were salvaged i mean not salvaged i thought they were they were long gone but, you know, God made it his mission to make sure I knew that they weren't. So I didn't put in extra effort until God told me, you know, go ahead, do this, do that. So then I proceeded to to let my friends know, you know, how much I love them and how much I was sorry for what I did and the things that happened. And I proceeded to build and rebuild those relationships with those people. And only then did I really realize that, like, you know, some friends that you meet in life are only there for a certain thing. They're only there for a certain time. But then you have other people, friends and family even, and strangers. You have other people who are there for a lifetime, who are always going to be beside you, whether it's their words or it's their thoughts or it's them actually being there physically. But some way, in some fashion, they're going to always be there with you. And I think that's so crazy about life is how at random times I remember things that mom told me or that one of my friends from high school have told me or just like something that somebody told me last year. I just remember all of a sudden and it helps me to like realize that these people are always with me and, you know, they love me and I love them. And we have these bonds that are never going to be breakable. They're always going to be unbreakable because they were formed out of love. They weren't formed out of hate or any other mischievous or mischie mischievous situations. So I just, I don't know. I think that one really has to learn to love people for themselves to actually understand and be able to build relationships with people. Um, but on top of that, learn to love yourself. You know, you never really find your identity until, I feel like after college, if you decide to go to college. But like, that's what college is for. It's the chance to find your identity, find who you are. Because I felt like for a long time, I knew who I was. But then when I got here, that all changed. And I'm pretty sure I talked about this last, you know, year in the video, but you know, things changed so much when I got here. My life changed tremendously. And I thank God for it because even for the bad things, I don't think that if I if I wouldn't have went through those things, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, I'm learning to love myself more. I'm learning to give myself credit when it's due and be selfish. I'm learning to be more selfish because I have a problem with being selfish. I have a problem with, you know, taking care of myself before I take care of others. And I think there's a, there's anything wrong with taking care of others sometimes. Um, but when it gets to a point where you put others above you, it's not okay. Because sometimes you really do have to put yourself first. Say, hey, this is for me. This is about me. This is me, 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 me. You know, don't go wildly and do it. But sometimes it's okay to say, hey, I want to take this time for myself. Or I want to do this for myself or this, that, and the third for me. Because we all need that time for ourselves to show ourselves that we love ourselves or to just learn more about ourselves. Like, you know, if I would have never tried sushi, I would never known that I love sushi. If I would have never went to a sushi restaurant by myself, I would have never known that I love sushi. 
So it just, it's that, you know, I'm allergic to shellfish, so I can't eat all the other good stuff, but I can eat turkey sushi, okay? You know, just a little mm-hmm. something, something, a little sprinkle dinkle. But if I would have never taken myself on that, on that date, I would have never known that I loved sushi the way that I do now. Um, and it's just small things, like, you know, small stuff. Focus on the future, but not too much. Focus more on the present and don't worry about the future. Work for your future, but don't worry for your future because everything is going to work out the way that it should. Because what God has for you, no man can take away. What has already been destined for you in your cards, in your chart, any other religion that you were born you were born into or that you believe in, whatever is for you is always going to be meant for you. It's never going to change. It's never going to go away. It's going to be deterred sometimes, but nobody can ever take it away from you. No man has that power. Remember that. Be happy. Drink water. And don't forget that love is infinite. Love is all around us. It's in the air. It's in the water. It's in the people. It's in every day of your life. But it's up to you to choose to see it. You're never truly happy unless you're happy within yourself. And with that... Happy New Year, everybody. Bye.